This video will introduce you to range of motion and its associated barriers. We'll begin on the left side of this diagram. As we move our joints through active motion, meaning as the patient moves the joint by themselves, they'll first reach P, located here, which is the physiological barrier. Physiological barrier is the furthest reach in a person's joint that they can reach by themselves. If you help the patient in what's called passive motion, so the patient is simply relaxing while the physician is doing, can, carrying out all of the motion associated with this joint, you can reach what's called the anatomical barrier, which is demonstrated here by A. Past this barrier, anything past this, will be very injuresome and dangerous to the person's joint as the person's ligaments and associated muscles cannot handle any excessive motion beyond the A, or anatomic barrier. The distance between the physiologic and anatomical barrier, or also known as the distance between active motion, the end of active motion, and the end of passive motion, is known as the elastic barrier, denoted here by the E. Now let's say we have a restriction or a somatic dysfunction in our range of motion. Here, on the opposite side of this diagram, you can see that this restriction is denoted by this R and this black line. The restriction has heavily restricted the range of motion so the patient cannot even reach their physiologic barrier, meaning they cannot even reach the end of their own active motion. 